Well, do you want to get updated about the events that happen on your appliance? Well, then you have an option to configure alerts. You have this option available on the ESA as well as the SMA, and these alerts are going to be in the form of email messages. And moving on, these could be in one of these uh, severities. It could be a critical alert, and uh, a warning, or an information level alert. Critical alert requires immediate attention. This is serious. Uh, then comes in warning. This may or may not be serious, depending on the kind of alert you get. You may further monitor, or as I said, it, require, it may require immediate attention. Then comes in information, just some routine functioning of the device, all that kind of information. Okay, these alerts can be configured from the GUI as well as uh, the CLI. I'm going to show you, I'm going to try to show you both of them today. And uh, yeah, let's move on. Okay, moving on to auto support. Auto support, this feature is available in your ESA using which if you configure this uh, particular feature, you'll be able to send the Cisco Iron port customer support, a copy of all alert messages generated by the system. And not just that, not just the alert messages, all these three things as well. Uh, weekly reports noting the uptime of the system, uh, output of the command status, not status detail, and asynchronous version used. This helps Cisco to be proactive in supporting your needs when they, got, when they get all this information. Now, I also wanted to let you know that by default, alert recipients sent to receive information severity level alert for system alerts type, they will receive a copy of every message that is sent to Cisco. Well, you can disable that as well. Anyways, we're going to go to the configuration part. I'm going to show you how to configure it from the CLI. Okay, moving on. Okay, let's talk about how these alerts are actually delivered. So the addresses specified in the alert recipient follow SMTP routes defined for those destinations. Well, we can cover SMTP routes in some other video. Um, well, for those who know, that's good. So alert messages are uh, delivered using standard MXNA record lookups. Okay, that's fine. Now coming to the cool stuff. Alert messages do not pass through the work queue. They're not scanned for viruses or spam, and they're not subjected to message filters or content filters. More cool stuff. Alert messages, they do not pass through the delivery queue, and they're not affected by the bounce profiles or the destination control limits. Well, that's some cool stuff. Now let's try to know the reason. Well, obviously these alert messages are to make sure that you know you get informed about the problems of your appliance. And that's why they're not sent using a normal mail delivery system that the ESA uses. Instead, these alert messages pass through a separate and parallel email system designed to operate even in the face of significant system failure in your async OS. And that is the reason why we have all these differences. Anyways, moving forward, and it's, it's pretty logical. Come on, let's move forward. Okay, okay, let's take a look at this example alert message. This is from uh, the user guide. I'm going to put the link in the description below. And uh, the cool parts about this is the from, which can be configured in the ESA, you have uh, the message. Uh, coming in as uh, the critical message is. Now the subject as well is gonna give you a fair bit of information on what you're really looking at. Now, in case it was a warning level alert, you'll see the warning message is. Okay, and then you'll have the message after that. It tells you the version and the serial number of the appliance for which you got this message and the timestamp as well. Well, for more information about this error, please see so-and-so. It will give you a link there. And uh, the best option is if you see a critical message um, there, uh, open up a tag case and uh, let them know about this alert that you got. And uh, yep, proceed accordingly. Okay, so I've logged into the GUI off this appliance. Let me go to system administration and then click on alerts. If I click on alerts, this is the page I'm gonna land on. Now, 
what are the options that we have? We have the option to add a recipient who will receive the alerts in the form of emails. And we have a couple of settings here that we can confirm. Uh, we, can, we can actually uh, set from there. Okay, now this is the part that plays a major role in setting up alerts. You can add the recipient here. So let's say a at test.com is your administrator. And if you want to add another one, you can add b at test.com right here and so on. So as it says, separate multiple email addresses with commas. And then this is uh, something else that receives software release and critical support notifications from Cisco support. This is uh, configurable. You can go ahead and uncheck this box if you want. If you don't want to receive all this, uh, all these uh, you know updates and notifications, you can go ahead and just uncheck it. Now, coming to this part, if you want user A and B in this example to receive all the alerts, then you can just go ahead and click on it. If you don't want to do that, and you just want it for a system, all of them critical, as well as warning, as well as info for these users, you can just click here. Now, if you don't wanna do that, you wanna do it randomly, you can just click on here, and let's say you want it for hardware as well, you can click here, message delivery problems here, something wrong with anti-spam, antivirus, you can have it here, and so on. So these are the options that are available uh, from here very granular so you can go ahead and configure it this way now apart from this let's take a look at so once you go ahead and uh, submit it um, you'll see that entry in here anyways now another thing another cool thing is this uh, top uh, view top alerts if I click on it you'll find a new window opens and it tells me about all of these uh, recent alerts 9th Feb 2022, it gives you the time and date and everything and the level of the alert. And it was a class system alert. So all of this right, all of these right here. So you have one for AMP as well. Wow. Okay. And all of these right here are system related. Okay. Now these ones are uh, auto support. Uh, we did talk about it and we know why do we see this as well, right? So... Uh, this is how it looks, okay? Now we can take a look at the other part of the configuration as well. Mm. well let's uh, talk about these three options as well. Right here, we're gonna click on Edit Settings. Just click on that. And this is the page I land on. Let me just zoom out a little bit, that's too much. Okay, now, uh, we have uh, the first option, the from address to use when sending the email. You can have it automatically generated as well. And this is a format it's going to uh, follow. Now, after that, we, after that, we have uh, the uh, wait time for sending a duplicate alert. If you don't want any wait time on it, you can keep it at zero, and uh, it's gonna it's not gonna wait for it, if, you know any any seconds or whatever you mentioned in here. Zero means do not wait. So that's not a good configuration, I would say. Um, apart from this, you have okay. One more thing about this is there's a there's a good example given in your user guide. I'll put the link in the description below. For example, if you keep the wait time as five as five, so what's the next time going to be? Because you know it changes. So the next one is going to be twice this value, the current value, plus the original value. So the next one will be. If the first one is five, the next one will be 15. Okay, so this will be the next value. And what will be the value after this? That will be the current value plus itself plus the original value, which gives us 35. And the same applies to 35 as well, and which gives us 75 and so on. Now, let's take a look at this one. When we talk about the maximum number of seconds to wait before duplicate alert, well, this is to make sure we put a cap on it. What do I mean by that? Let's take a look uh, back at this example. Now it has reached 75, let's say. Then the next value is going to be 75 plus 75 plus 5, which is 155. 
And the next value after this is going to be 315. Well, eventually the interval could become extremely large, right? In order to make sure that that does not happen from 5 to 15 to 35, then to 75, no. We can make sure, let's say, for example, if I keep, keep this value as 60, it's not going to go to 75 in that case, right? It's going to be 60. After that, it's going to be 120 and so on. So it's it's a good way to make sure that, you know, in, in case of the uh, uh, time interval between the two alerts, um, you know, uh, you're pretty sure that it's going to be, it's going to become very high, right? Because it keeps incrementing. In that case, you can put a cap on it using this value and make sure that, you know, it doesn't become very large. Rather than you can keep this cap and make sure that it follows this pattern. Okay, after a certain value, obviously. Well, let's take a look at the other parts of the configuration. Okay, let's take a look at how to configure it from the CLI. Now we'll run the command alert config. Okay, so this is the command that you're gonna use to configure it. Now, uh, auto support, this is something we talked about and it is enabled. Uh, you will receive a copy of the weekly auto support reports. Alerts will be sent using so and so. So at the moment, no sending alerts. So there are no addresses configured. So no recipients have been added. So you have these options available. Okay, now I can do a new here setup for those uh, three um, options that we just saw and the from address from where but we, we actually saw all these options from the GUI as well. So it's gonna be the same thing. If I run new, it's gonna ask me, please enter the new email address to send alerts, a at uh, test.com. If I do that, hit enter, okay. Choose the alert classes and so on. So just hit enter, enter. Okay, that's it. So now we have one configured, which is this one. Okay, and severities, it lists that as well. And release and support notifications. All right, so that's why we have these extra options available now. Edit, delete, and clear. Now we have a setup available for those three options. Uh, initial. As I mentioned, zero is to disable duplicate alert summaries, which means that it's uh, basically not going to wait uh, for that interval and just send it over. Okay, if I hit enter maximum number, just hit enter. Would you like to uh, enable Cisco Iron, uh, Iron Port Auto Support? Well, let's say yes. Would you like to receive a copy of the weekly auto, uh, auto support reports? say yes maximum number of alerts to save so what is this that we're talking about okay let me tell you this so maximum number of alerts to save these are actually uh you can find this in the output of display alerts and we actually checked it from the gui as well i'll show it to you again in a moment so there's a command called display alerts this is what it's talking about those 50 right so this is what it's talking about display alerts the same uh, way like for example if i want to check the same of display alerts the equivalent of display alerts from the gui is is this view top alerts we check this right so in the CLI, we have display alerts and the equivalent uh, command is uh, from the GUI, the equivalent is uh, view top alerts. So that's pretty much it um, for this video. There could be a couple more things that I didn't touch. But I don't want to make it super long. It's already um, a lot longer than I expected. So I'm just going to stop right here. And I want to thank you all, whoever made it till the end of the video. Well, you have a wonderful time ahead. And before we go, kindly like the video and subscribe to the channel. Have a great time. Goodbye.